Welcome to the Word Made Flesh. This is our weekly review of the upcoming Sunday, the Word of God, and how it incorporates into our daily lives. Absolutely. Jonathan, we are here at 15. Week 15. 15 Sunday in Ordinary Time. Plugging right through. We're not even halfway. There's 34 weeks in Ordinary Time. It is 34. Time. So I didn't still know. early. Yeah, 34 weeks. So I was about to start singing we're halfway there. Not halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> but we are get, we're building up. These, these, go, these gospels, these readings this summer, they're building to something, but we're not there yet. So we'll keep that under wraps. No. This, this, this week's all about being called, being chosen. Being chosen, yeah. We are called. We are chosen. Yeah. We it are Christ with... for one another. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Tim, where do we start? Amos. Amos. We don't hear much from Amos, do we? No. I had to take a class. My prophet's class in seminary was on the prophet Amos. So depending on, you know, I think the professor would just kind of like go through the prophets and whatever prophet you happened to be on in his research was the prophet you were going to learn about. My class learned all about the prophet Amos. So I am an expert. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you tell us what happened and I'll tell you what it means. All right. Well, so... I'm not even sure who it was, um, was talking to Amos. Amaziah, maybe? Amaziah, Amaziah, that's yep. right. The priest. Um, and he says, you're going to leave Bethel. Get away from here. Because he, it seems like he doesn't like him. Yeah. So here's what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's... Amos has been called by God to be a prophet. and But he's a nobody. He's really a nobody. And that's what he's trying to tell Amaziah. So... We will, we will encounter this. The reading will begin with the priest, Amaziah, yelling at Amos and saying, Get out of here, you prophet for hire. You who prophesy and then expect to get paid for it. So he's, really, he's accusing, he's accusing uh, Amos of basically being a televangelist. That's what he's doing. Like, you make your livelihood on preaching and then you just, you know, whatever. Well, the reason he's telling Amos this is because Amos has been called by God to basically tell the king and the leaders that God's not happy with them. And of course, when you're told that, you know, when you're told bad things, what's our tendency? Push back. Push back. And so that's what the priest does. He said, get out of here. And Amos stands his ground and said, I am not a prophet for hire. I am a sheep herder. I, I'm a, I raise sycamore trees. I'm a farmer. And I'm doing what God told me to do. Yeah. So that's where we... It's a short reading. It's very short. But it is. It's really about being chosen and having to speak difficult things. So it kind of follows last week's. It does. Last Sunday's readings. Having to speak difficult things. I think oh. that's the... A theme that will probably continue for a while. And that's probably why Jesus calls simple folk to do his work because, you know, not as afraid. They don't have anything to lose. Yeah, if you don't have authority. And if you don't have wealth and power, I don't have anything to lose. I can just say whatever God wants wants me to say and such is life. The freer you, you are freer when you're not owned by the things you own. Think about that for a second. Think about that. That was, that was uh, wise. So the psalm, <laughs> the psalm dives right in that, into that. Um, Lord, let us see your kindness. And grant us your salvation. And grant us your salvation. And then the psalm goes on basically saying, we'll listen to you, God, which is what Amaziah was not saying. So our right. response to the word of God, I think, this Sunday is, we're not going to be hard of heart. Whatever, Lord, you want to say to us, we're going to listen. It's a good thing I'm not preaching this weekend because I don't have to get up there and be rejected. <laughs> the deacons are preaching this weekend at St. Charles, so we'll see what harsh words they have for us. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> Ephesians. St. Paul takes us to the Ephesians. Yeah. What's going on in there? I don't know if this one really plugs in with the other readings. A little bit. He's okay. talking a little bit about how still being chosen, like we are God's people. That's right. And we are blessed. Okay. Um, and it's all because of th- Jesus. Like Jesus, it is through Jesus that we have received this blessing and that we have been redeemed. And all of the good things that have come through us, to us are because of Jesus. That's right. So he, he connects the call and our call today to, to Jesus Christ. That in Christ, in his blood, in all of these things, we have been made partakers and sharers and we are chosen, chosen ones. Mm-hmm. 
You know, we are we are chosen ones. That's an important thing. Sometimes called the elect. So if you sometimes hear that, it's not that you've been voted for, <laughs> but it's been you have been chosen. Like you're elected. You but God has has called you forward. Yeah. Which the gospel speaks right to that. Yeah, it's the, the 12 apostles, and he g- gathers them together. It's acknowledging that he chose them. Yes. And then he sends them out two by two. Yes. And says, don't take anything, not even a second tunic. You can take a walking stick and sandals. And that's that's it. it. So this is the, this is the great uh, sending out his disciples two by two. Mm-hmm. So... He, he gathers his disciples together. He sends them out. Because remember last week, uh, Jesus preached in his hometown and right. he was rejected. So now I think he's taking a little bit different tack. I mean, it's interesting to, to watch Jesus's process here. That, and sometimes we don't think about this when we just kind of read each thing separately. But to like look at this week to week, it's like, okay, Jesus went and preached and was rejected. So now it looks like what he's doing is he's preparing the way. So he sends his disciples out two by two to sort of preview him. Yeah, soften it up a little Maybe, bit. Maybe, yeah. But he gives them his full authority. Yeah. Like he's, he's already given them the authority to, to preach and to, to drive out demons. But now he really in, in, encourages them to go and be his presence among the people. And they do that. That's exactly what they do. That's exactly what they did. And and to go in there and to really be wherever they are at. Mm-hmm. Like sink yourself in there, accept the hospitality that's given to you, preach where you are, and if anybody rejects you, shake the dust from your feet and leave. And go on. And it is I think that it's that weird line that it says like stay until you leave. You know, when, when someone welcomes you into their home, stay until you leave. Yeah. But I really think that touches on being fully present. That's a good way to put it. That, you know, it's, you're not wandering about something else, but you're, you are staying mentally staying until you leave. And that's a good thing because sometimes we can get ourselves into situations and then like, okay, I'm here, but I'm always looking now is there anything, is there a better opportunity? Did I miss something? Do I need to be, you know, no. It, once you commit, commit. And be fully, and welcome that. You know, it's just, there's all, we could do have what ifs about everything in life. Yes. And we will be miserable. You're always looking. There's a great line in the screw tape letters that we went through where, where the temptation is to keep looking to the future, to keep looking down the road. And as long as we continue to heap up all of our riches on the altar of the future, we will never attain it because it will always be in the future. So Jesus is just saying, live, live fully today. But all of these readings together the sense of being chosen, the sense of being called, the sense of being sent. I mean, there's this is basic Christianity. It is. This it's is the foundation of our faith. What we are supposed to be doing that, think about this. If this past week, I celebrated the anniversary of my baptism. And that was, you know, a reminder to me of the gift that I had received from my parents who received it from their parents, who received it da, 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 all the way back to this gospel. Yeah, from those guys. When those guys went out and preached the gospel, eventually it got to me and you. I mean, that's amazing to think about. The stuff we're hearing today is how it got to you. Process that. <laughs> I know, I know. So I guess that's where we take it then into our own lives. That how do I share the gospel? How am I called? How am I sent? How do I share the gospel? And Jesus Christ strengthens us through all of it. That was St. Paul. You were chosen in Jesus Christ. Well, I think we covered it. I think we're good. That's the the Sunday reading. So (laughs) rejoice in your call and share the gospel. We hear those words at the end of Mass every now and again. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. And this is the, the perfect way to consider how do I announce the gospel of the Lord. Perfect. See you on Sunday.